Good day everyone, we are Reporter 7 and we will be discussing Rock Mechanics 2. But let us introduce ourselves first. I am Lorna Zarika Arzaga, your first reporter, and then Ms. Z uh, Gliza Saklet, followed by Mr. Mark Junal Gabinete, and lastly Ms. Rachel K. Ann Milo. Now let's move on to our first topic, which is elasticity. To make it simple, elasticity is the ability of solids to stretch beyond their natural length. And the amount in which they stretch depends on the force that's applied. Now, under elasticity is its subtopic, <clears throat> which is stress. Stress is the force applied to a rock and may cause deformation. Now, para mas maintindihan nyo, let's say this is our foot. And kapag may larger object uh, sa ibabaw niya, which is my force downward, is hindi siya masyado masakit pat kapag um, ma, uh, mas smaller yung object or mas pointy. Uh, kahit hindi siya ganun kalakas yung force na nag act sa paa mo is masakit. So, para mas maintindihan nyo yung stress, siya lang, uh, stress is the measure of intensity of a force. So, doon sa ating analogy, yung uh, stress doon is yung naramdaman na sakit from the force galing doon sa object na uh, nag force na nag act doon sa foot mo. Uh, now, there are two types of stresses, which is the first, the normal stress, and second is the shear stress. Stresses that are typical to the three types of plate boundaries first, which we have the convergent boundaries, which have the compression stress, the divergent boundaries, which has a tension stress, and lastly, the transform boundary, which has a shear stress. Uh, now, moving on to normal stress, when a force acts perpendicular or normal to the surface of an object, it exerts a normal stress. So, your normal stress, uh, due lang siya sa stretching or compressing actually to the member or the object. So, kumbaga ba yung force niya is perpendicular doon sa object. Like, ito yung force, perpendicular siya sa object. Now, to calculate the, uh, the intensity of these forces sa normal uh, stress, we have the sigma is equals to F over A, wherein uh, this sigma symbol represents normal stress. And F is the applied normal force. And A is the cross-sectional area. Ito saan yung force. And uh, the units uh, na ginagamit natin sa stress is the pounds per inch square, which is the PSI that gives per inch square the KSI. And Newton per meter squared, which is the Pascal. And uh, Newton per Millimeter squared is the megapascal. Now, ano nga ba yung cross-section area na nabanggit ko kanina? In geology, it is a diagram representing the geologic features intersecting a vertical plane and is used to illustrate an area structure and stratigraphy that would otherwise be hidden underground. So here, in the illustration, the force acting through this section, sabi, is equal to the force acting through the cross-section at A, neglecting the weight of the pillar. However, dito sa C, makikita natin na yung force is no longer normal to the cross-section kasi naging diagonal na siya. So, yan na yung uh, uh, doon sa A, which is the area or the cross-sectional area doon sa formula. Now, Dito naman tayo sa shear stress. When a force acts parallel to the surface of an object, it exerts a shear stress. Now, itong shear stress, uh, para lang siyang uh, nag, uh, nag nagtitir, para lang siyang tearing yung isa, going up, going down, and yung force is nagtitir ganon, like that. So, parang scissor, uh, uh, the other one is going up, and the other one is going down, and then it shears the material. So, yun yung pinag yung shear stress. Kung, uh, how much can a material hold when we have that force? 
So, ano nga ba intensity ng force na yun? So, to calculate that force, uh, we have this formula here, which is that tau is equals to F over A, wherein yung tau is the symbol for shear stress, uh, F is the applied force, and A is the cross-sectional area. Now, dito naman tayo sa stress tensor. Uh, pinadali ko na lang yung uh, explanation dito kasi yun lang rin naman siya. So, it gives a complete description of the stress state at a point. So, as you can see, ito siya. Yung naka-parenthesis. So, para lang siyang collection ng vectors para makuha yung isang quantity. So, ina, uh, kumbaga ba, it, siya, siya yung nagde-describe doon sa force sa bawat katulad dito sa illustration. Yung force na to is the sigma x, sigma y, uh, sigma uh, x, sigma y, tau y x, tau x y, and so on. So, it, uh, the stress tensor is ito, yung sigma x, tau x y, tau x z, tau y x, sigma y, tau y z, Mm, tau z x, tau z y, and uh, sigma z. Now, moving on, on principal stress in two-dimensional. For principal stresses, we wish to find the surfaces on which only normal stresses act. So, yun yung principal stress. Doon lang siya sa sigma. Bale, uh, here sa illustration, we're talking about stress transformation. Uh, and then, we're going to use this equation. Di ba kanina may ganda tayong figure, which is yung uh, balig ito, yung initial. Ngayon, as we rotate these elements, we are getting different stresses where yung sigma y and sigma x becomes maximum and the tau may become zero. So now, ginagamit natin itong uh, equation na to, yung tatlo dito, to find the stress along that angle. So, ito yung equations para makuha natin siya. Now, dito naman sa more stress circle, uh, para uh, ano lang siya, we're going uh, to do that, itong principal stress na formula, equation dito, in a different way. Di ba? Yun na yung for, uh, equation kanina. Ito is different method lang siya, pero exact same thing lang yung kinukuha nila. Pero mas simpler lang dito sa more stress circle. Kasi gumagamit lang tayo ng something simple as a circle. Now we start off with a stress elements, which are the stresses that are acting on a rock or small piece of material. So we see we have in y direction the compression stress. In x direction, we also have the stress there, which is the tension. And in the corner, we have shear stress. They always uh, come to the same corner, corner, yung shear, di ba? Ganyan. And, mm, ganon. Wherein yung uh, normal normal stress is compress and yung tension. Ganon pa stretch. Okay, so now all the information that you need to plot uh, your circle, circle is contained here sa first illustration. Um, now, we're gonna go through the theory on how you would set up a more circle for any stress state. So, let's say itong sigma x is bigger than sigma y, and of course, the origin is gonna be zero normal stress and zero shear stress. And since tau xy is acting on the positive direction, we'll put that here, and since tau yx is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction to tau xy, we'll put tau yx down here in similar distance. Now, if you draw a grid line here and connecting these two points, we'll get the center line, which is the uh, sigma mean. Now, the 2 theta here means it's going to be twice the angle theta that it would take to rotate this stress state to the state which their principal stresses occur. Now, in getting the principal stress naman, this side here, the tau xy while the adjacent side will, ito, dito, this will be minus here naman. And the hypotenuse will be R. Now we'll get the equation of R using the Pythagorean theorem, which is the square root 
of this side and then this side. Now calculating those values, let's say it gave us this sigma x and sigma y. Now, uh, para sa further explanation, and mas maintindihan nyo din, naglagay ako ng link dyan below uh, where you can watch about more circle. And yung link naman sa baba niya is um, more uh, parang example na siya. Now, lastly, we have the principal stress in 3D. The normal and shear stress elements in 3D can be assembled into a 3 by 3 matrix known as the stress tensor. So, kanina yung 2D consider lang natin which is yung sigma x and y, uh, sigma and tau x, y. Here sa 3D is kasama na yung z. Kaya, buong stress tensor na yung ginagamit natin. Kaya ganito na itura niya. Yung formula. Now, substituting the values from the matrix, pwede natin makalculate yung principal stress in 3D using this tensor transform calculator wherein is, ilalagay mo na lang yung values and yung angle of transformation. So, that is all for my report. Thank you. So, I'm guys, I'm already Saklet and my report is all about strains, elastic moduli, strains, energy. So, strain. Strain in, is a change in shape or size resulting from applied forces or deformation. Rocks only strain when they place under stress. Any rock can be strained. Strain can be elastic, brittle, or ductile. So, ductile deformation is also called plastic deformation. So, think about this example. So, the initial locations of a particular particle within the sample is x, y, and z. So, the positions of this particle shift as a result of an external force. So, we will use the letters u, v, and w to represent the shift in the x, y, and z direction respectively. So, the next one is the quantities of u and u, v, and w are called the the displacements of the particle. So, in order to make this the signs of the displacement compatible with the signs of the stresses, the displacement are taken to be positive when they are directed in the negative directions of the axis. Hence, the new positions of the particle initially at x, y, and z becomes x equals x minus u, y equals y minus v, z equals z minus w. So, if the displacement u, v, and w are constants, they are the same for every particle within the sample. Then, the displacement is simply a translation of a rigid body. So, another simple form of the displacement is the rotations of the rigid body. For a small rotation specified by w, where the magnitude of gives the angle of the rotations, while the directions of W gives the axis of rotation. So the new positions of the particle becomes R equals R plus W X change R minus R0. So the displacement related to the positions O and P are not equal. So the quantity defined as this E means elongation. So, elongation equals L minus L over L equals equals theta L over L. So, it is called elongation. Elongation corresponding to the point O and the direction OP. To comply with the sign convention for stresses, we require that the elongation is positive for a construction. So the elongation is a specific type of quantity known as strains. The other type of strain that may occur can be expressed by the change of the angle between two initially orthogonal directions. So the quantity L equals 1 over 2 tan change it is called So this equation is called the shear strain, corresponding to the point O in the direction OP. For many applications, one will be only dealing with infinitesimal strains, which implies that the strains, elongations, and 
L are also small that their products in squares can be ignored. And we will make these approximations in the following nonlinear effects. So this is the trace of the strain tensor. Elongation volume equals elongation x plus elongation y plus elongation c. So it is identical to the volume metric strain, the relative decrease in volume. So this equation is identical to the volume metric strain, the relative decrease in volume. So the volumetric strain is dependent or independent of the choice of coordinate axis and it's thus an invariance of strain. So in compatibility conditions, we note from the general definitions of strain that all strains are derivatives in various combinations of the components of the displacement vector u equals change u1, u2, and u3. So some useful expressions may be derived from this fact. For instance, we observe that the volumetric strain elongation volume equals divergence of u. So this equation, the minus, the, the minus sign is due to our sign convention for strains. Other reality, relations can be obtained by Comparing sums of the derivatives of strain. So these three differential relations together. So these three differential relations together with three others that express these equations in terms of second derivatives of shear strains are known as the compatibility conditions of strains. So in principal strains, we, we saw that for some specific directions, the shear stress vanishes so that for uh, specific orientations of the coordinate systems with axis parallel to the principal axis of stress, the stress tensors become particular sim particularly simple. The situation is similar for strains in two dimensions. It can be shown that the shear strains vanishes in the directions theta relative to the x-axis which fulfill the equations. So thus, in two dimensions, there are two orthogonal directions for which the shear strain vanishes. These directions are called the principal axis of strain. So the, the elongations in the directions of the principal axis of strains are called the principal strains. So in three dimensions, there are three principal axes of strings. The principal strings are found by solutions of the determ determinant equations. So the solutions denoted are denoted E sub 1, E sub 2, and E sub 3. The directions cosines 11x, 11y, 11c identifying the principal axis corresponding the E sub 1 are found by solutions of the equations. So, plane strain and plane stress. In several pr practic practical applications, it is good approximations to assume that all cross sections along given axis are in the same conditions and that there is no dis displacement along the x-axis. This state of strain is called plane strain. In the following, we shall assume the unique axis of the c-axis. The strain tensor for plane strain is then where all strain components are independent of z. The term plane, of course, refers to the fact that the strain is confined to a, to, to a plane. If we only have displacements along Z, and this displacement is independent of Z, the strain state is referred to as antiplane strain. So in elastic moduli, the theory of linear
So, inelastic, mo so inelastic moduli, the theory of linear elasticity deals with situations where there are linear relationships between applied stresses and resulting strains. While most, ter while, while, while most rocks do, do behave non-linearly when subjects to large stresses, their behavior may normally be described by linear relations for sufficiently small changes in stress. Consider a sample of length L and cross-sectional area of A equals D2. When the force F is applied on its end surface, the length of the sample is reduced to L. The applied stress is the X equals F over A and the corresponding elongation is elongation X equals change L minus L over L. If the sample behave linearly there, is linear relations between x and ez, which may write in this equation. So this equation is known as Hooke's law, while the coefficient e is called Young's modulus or simply the e modulus. Young's modulus belongs to a group of coefficients called elastic moduli. It, it is a measure of the stiffness of the sample so the sample's resistance against being compressed by an excel stress so isotropic materials are materials whose response is independent of the orientations of the applied stress for such materials the principal axis of stress and the principal axis of strings so this is the example of isotropic materials so it is always coincide for isotropic materials in the general relations between stresses and strains may be written may be written by these equations so this is also the some relations between elastic moduli so in strain energy a strain body possesses a potential energy which may be related during a loaded and actually with a stress so the resulting elongation is elongations equals e so the work done by increasing the stress from zero to one is this equation so as the stress state in this case is an actual one is a principal stress while e sub one is a principal strain when the other two principal stresses are non-zero corresponding terms will add to the expression for the work so the work per unit volume equals the potential energy per unit volume is becomes w equals So as a sort of state in this case is an actual so one is a principal stress while e sub one is a principal strain when the other two principal stresses are non-zero corresponding terms will add to the expressions for the work so the work per unit volume equals the potential energy per unit then becomes work equals distance so work equals force times distance That's all for thank you. Good day everyone. I am Martinel C. Gabinete and now I will be discussing the thermoelasticity and poroelasticity which are still under the elasticity in rock mechanics too. So before I start my report, disclaimer lang po, yung report ko po is only introduction sa mga formula na under elasticity. So if you have confusion sa discussion, or questions, you can refer 
uh, sa reference na ilalagay namin sa end ng module para makita nyo po yung full details ng mga formulas na naipresent ko po sa inyo. So, without further ado, let's start the discussion. So, first, we have thermoelasticity. So, thermoelasticity is the study of relationship between the elastic properties of a material and its temperature or between its thermal conductivity and its stresses. So, basically, yung thermoelasticity ay yung uh, elasticity or yung ability ng isang material to expand or contract based sa kanyang temperature or thermal conductivity and stresses. So, yes, rocks has elasticity. So, kapag nag-undergo ito sa thermoelasticity, pwede siyang ma-deform and um, it's either mag-bend siya, expand, or contract. So, yun. So, under thermoelasticity, we have thermal strain. So, thermal strain is a property of material where a material is allowed to contract or expand freely with the increase or decrease in temperature. So, to solve the thermal uh, strain caused by temperature change, we have the initial thermal strain formula. So, here, as you can see, this first formula, where negative um, linear uh, thermal expansion times the change in temperature minus the initial temperature. So, yeah. So, next, we have thermal stress. So, thermal stress is a property of a material uh, when its dimension change with the increase or decrease in temperature. So, yet it is not allowed to expand or contract freely. So, yung thermal stress ay highly dependent siya sa coefficient ng thermal expansion. So, kaya kapag malaki ang coefficient ng thermal expansion, malaki rin yung expansion ng material. Pero ito, um, hindi siya basa-basa kasi nga it is not allowed to expand or contract uh, freely. So, to solve the thermal stress, we have the magnitude of the thermal stress formula or the equation which is given by this one, the second um, equation or formula sa aking presentation. So, where the negative initial thermal um, strain is still present and the capital E as Young's modulus or E modulus. So, yeah. Next is the stress strain relation for linear thermoelasticity. So, in order to take thermal effects into consideration, the stress-strain relation must be modified to take the thermal stress and strain into account. So, using the compact notation employed in the stress-strain relation, uh, we may write or we can write uh, the equation or formula by this one. So, yan. Yeah, as you can see, the uh, equation 1.118 where the formula was composed of partial and G as the Lames parameter coefficient, volume, uh, volumetric strain, and Kronecker symbol or yung delta, and K as the resistance um, against hydrostatic compression. So, kapag in terms of K and V, yung ating stress-strain relation uh, formula, um, it becomes like this. So, medyo mahaba na siya. And kapag in terms naman sa E and V, uh, we have this. So, mas mahaba na siya. So, as you can see, may mga bagong coefficient and notation sa mga formula. And that's because of, uh, na-derive na yung um, stress strain formula from equation of 1.118. So, yun. Then, next is, let's proceed to poroelasticity. So, poroelasticity is a field in materials science and mechanics that studies the interaction between fluid flows and solid deformation within a linear porous medium and its um, extension of elasticity in porous medium flow. So, as their name indicates, porous materials are solid um, structures comprised of pores or voids. So, commonly, yung mga materials like... Um, Yung mga natural materials like rocks and other solids are associated sa poroelasticity. So, also, um, may theory ng poroelasticity and it was uh, proposed by Maurice Anthony Bayot. So, um, pinapost na yon only as a theoretical extension of soil. So, under ng poroelasticity, we have the suspension of solid particles in a fluid. So, under the suspension of solid, okay. 
So under the poroelasticity, we have the suspension of solid particles in a fluid. So under the suspension of solid, we have this kind of formula or equation. Yan, the 1.127. This formula is the volumetric strain due to external pressure where K sub EFF as bulk modulus of the mixture. Next is the total deformation naman must, however, equal sa sum of the deformation of each component. So therefore, we have this formula or equation, the 1.128, where the S and F are the notation for solid and fluid, and V sub TOT or as uh, the total volume. So next naman is porosity. So as the volume occupied by the fluid relative to total volume, we have this formula or equations. So as you can see, two different formula or equations. Kasi yung isa is for solid and yung isa is for fluid. So the volumetric strain solid and volumetric strain fluid are given by the bulk moduli of the solid and fluid respectively. So, with that being said, yung equation 1.28 or ito yung nasa left kanina, uh, pwede natin siyang isulat as this um, formula or equation. So, after that, um, we can combine the equation 1.27 and the 1.31 and we can now find the effective modulus of suspension formula which is given by this equation. So, after that, by combining equation 1.27 and 1.131, we can now find the effective modulus of the suspension formula, which is given or noted, denoted by this equation or formula. So, this formula basically is the effective modulus of the suspension. And guys, this is an example of particularly simple porous materials. So, yeah. Next is the Biot's poroelasticity. Next is the Biot's poroelastic theory for uh, static properties. So Biot's theory of poroelasticity relates the strain, strain of a porous materials to changes of the applied stress and the pore pressure. So we can consider an anastropic porous and permeable medium consisting two uh, different components or two components, a solid and a fluid part. So, using the equation 1.76 we have for the volumetric strain, we can denote this formula into this one formula. So, for the fluid part naman, we will define a strain parameter, which is parang ito yung uod na uh, symbol, but which describes the ano, volumetric deformation and the fluid. So, we have this formula for the volumetric deformation, this one, and it is 1.134. So the change in the mass of fluid in a volume element attached to the solid can be divided into two parts. So the change of the pore volume due to the change in the external stress and or the pore pressure and the compression, the compression of fluid as the pore pressure changes. So this means um, we can write the formula of uh, volumetric deformation as like this um, where B sub P um, as pore volume, K sub F as bulk modulus modulus of the pore, pore fluid and P sub F as pore pressure. Proceed. Um, Biot 1962 showed how the linear stress strain relation for this two-phase system can be expressed in terms of strain parameters, the volumetric strain and deformation, the stress tensor elements, and the pore pressure. So as you can see, yung maraming formula na yan, yan yung tinutukoy ni Bayot. So further, the written on the abbreviated form as equation 1.108 and equation 1.136 to 1.41 become this equation. Yung equation 1.36 to 1.141 na yan, yan din po yung mga equation uh, na marami which is galing from Bayot. Where the uh, partial and capital G are the lames parameters of the porous materials while C and M are the additional elastic moduli required to describe a two-phase medium. So basically, Bayot um, showed that this is the consequence of thermodynamic principles. 
So next is the four volume compressibility and related topics. So the change um, of the pore volume as a result of change in the pore pressure or uh, confining stress is obvious interest in petroleum related rock mechanics. So the pore's volume compressibility refers to the fractional change in the pore volume of the rock with the unit change in pressure. So in pore volume compressibility, we have this formula. And this formula allows us to define the pore compressibility with respect to confining stress as this formula na. So also, the pore compressibility with respect to pore pressure as this formula. So yung formula ng pore volume compressibility ay mag change sila um, according sa kanilang with respect. However, Zimmerman in 1991 points out that an expression sometimes given for the pore compressibility um, based on the aver weighted average is incorrect. Thus, Zimmerman differentiate the definition of the V sub P equals porosity V sub um, TOT or the total volume and uses the effective stress law to derive the following expression for the deformation of the grain materials and means as uh, stress in grains. Therefore, we have this formula for difference, uh, deformation of the grain materials and this formula for mean stress in the grains. So next is the Skempton coefficient. So Skempton, Skempton's um, coefficient B is a significant pore fluid uh, parameter, which is defined as the ratio of the induced pore pressure to the change of stress loading under the undrained condition. So the Skempton's B coefficient is defined as this equation or formula. Yes, very quite complicated siya tignan, but originally, um, originally Skempton uh, in 1954 defined the parameters A and B according to this formula. So this formula or equation was chosen to be appropriate for triacial uh, compression test which uh, the change in mean stress may be written in this form na. So basically yung equation na yan, pinapakita lang rin yan na yung B sa equation na 1.186 is the same as equation sa 185. So next, um, the correspondence to thermoelasticity. So the equation governing poroelasticity are to some extent similar to the equation governing thermoelasticity. So this implies that a specific solution to problems in one field may be used to solve corresponding problems in other. So by eliminating the volumetric deformation between equation 1.142 and 1.143, we can get this formula or equation. Tapos, um, kung i-introduce naman natin dito yung biot coefficient, which is the alpha or yung A from equation 1.169, um, and defining or comparing it to 1.146, uh, we obtain this kind of formula. So, tandaan lang po natin yung mga solution of problems in thermoelasticity may be directly applied rin sa poroelasticity. And may important point to note rin po pala sa corresponding to thermoelasticity. Um, since stress or strain do not induce significant temperature change, the temperature field is governed by diffusion equation. Pore pressure on the other hand is of course directly coupled of stresses or stress leading to coupled equation. So there are however some important cases where decoupling occurs. This includes all the steady state problems and consolidation problem leading to the equation 1.241. So, if you want to further study this one, you can read uh, this in the reference na makikita nyo sa huli na module namin. So, doon, you can further study and analyze the given equation and paano sila na derive na derive. So, for the last part, the other notation convention. So, here, we have four independent moduli and isotropic pore elasticity, which is the, the partial, the G equals to G sub FR, the capital M and C. So, iyan, um, ginamit natin yan siya sa taas, um, if naaalala nyo pa. So, other notation, uh, meron tayo K as undrained pulp modulus, K sub FR, 
So, drain or frame bulk uh, modulus, the K sub S, solid grain bulk modulus, G equals to GF, um, G equals to G sub FR as shear modulus, and B as Scampton's parameter and A by its parameter, V or subscript U and drain parameters, and VFR of FR as drain parameters. Yeah. So, these following notation conventions are only few. So, if you want to see the rest, you can open our references um, for further knowledge or discussion. But for now, that would be all for my part. And thank you for listening and hope you grasp some ideas. Thank you and God bless. So, once again, good day everyone. I am Rachel K. and Armilo, and in this part, I will be discussing the two properties of elasticity, which are the anisotropy and nonlinear elasticity. For anisotropy, it is the property of being directionally dependent as opposed to isotropy, which means homogeneity in all directions. It occurs when the relationship between the stress and strain in a material depends on its orientation. So, an example of this is yung sa river. Siyempre, di ba, may mga stones sa river. And yung river, isa lang yung direction ng kanyang flow. And yung uh, mga rocks sa river ay maaaring magkaroon ng cracks. And yung cracks nila ay nakadepende sa flow ng river. So, kaya matatawag natin na iyon ay anisotropy. Now, for a general isotropic material, Yung stress and strain is linearly related sila with each other or symmetric. And meron tayong formula para dito or ito yung tinatawag din natin generalized Hooke's Law. So kung makikita ninyo sa screen or ito, pwede rin tinignan dito sa hawak ko ngayon. Ito yung sigma of, sigma notation of I and J, ito yung sa stress. And itong epsilon of K and L, ito yung sa strain. And itong C of I, J, K, and L, ito yung tinatawag nating elastic moduli or yung um, fourth order stiffness tensor. Um, ngayon, some of the value ng constant or yung tinatawag nating elastic moduli, yung C of I, J, K, and L, pwede yun siyang mawala or mabawasan. Pero, um, symmetric pa rin sila sa isa't isa. And kung makikita ninyo sa screen, magiging ganito siya. Kahit na iba-iba yung positions ng constant natin ay equal pa rin sila sa isa't isa. And now, let's move on with the nonlinear elasticity. And dito, sa part na to, ay i-discuss ko yung relationship ng stress and strain. So, lagi po natin tatandaan na yung stress and strain ay proportional or directly proportional sila sa isa't isa. And there's always a constant relationship between the applied stress and the resulting strain, regardless of the magnitude of the stress and strain. But, once na hindi naging proportion yung stress and strain, ito yung tinatawag nating non-linear. And, yung formula nito ay makikita natin sa screen. Yung sigma notation or yung stress is equal to E sub 1 of strain plus E sub 2 of strain squared plus E sub 3 of strain cube, and so on and so forth. Ngayon, makikita po natin sa screen yung iba't ibang graph na nagpapakita ng relationship ng stress and strain. Sa una, or yung A, makikita natin dito na ito ay linear elastic material. Sa B naman po, ito ay perfectly elastic material. Sa C, it is elastic material with hysteresis. And sa D naman po, Ito yung material suffering permanent deformation. So, if the correct definition for the moduli is used, the linear form of the stress-strain relations may be used far beyond the initial li linear region. For example, Hooke's law may be written in its original form, na katulad ng makikita natin na nasa screen. The sigma notation or stress is equal to E second epsilon time epsilon, where E second epsilon is the second value of the Young's modulus. Alternatively, the relation may be written in a um, differential form. 
katulad ng makikita natin dito sa sa screen. So, na-derive na po yung formula natin kanina. So, may makikita po tayong figure sa baba. And the stress-strain relation shown in this figure is commonly observed in rocks. The unloading path is different from the loading path. And this is what we call the hysteresis. Or hysteresis. For, materi for materials behaving like this, the work done during loading is not entirely released during unloading. And yung elastic moduli related to the unloading path ay tinatawag naman nating unloading moduli. So, yan. Tingnan po natin yung figure dito sa baba. Yan po yung um, makikita natin yung effect na tinatawag na hysteresis and yung unloading moduli. Another figure naman po na makikita natin sa baba. For sufficiently large stresses, many rocks enter a phase where permanent deformation occurs. Yet, the material is sti still able to resist loading. And the material is then said to be ductile. The point where the transition form elast from e the transition from elastic to ductile behavior of course is called the yield of point. So ito po yung sa part ko for anisotropy and nonlinear elasticity and inintroduce ko lang po yung mga formulas na ginagamit natin dito sa dalawang ito. Same with my Groupmates or the previous reporters, inintroduce lang po namin yung mga formulas para sa rock mechanics 2, specifically sa elasticity. And we hope na meron po kayong mga natutunan and maganda na alalahanin po natin or i-remember natin itong mga formulas na inintroduce namin sa Indel. Magagamit po natin ito sa uh, mga um, susunod na subjects natin sa um, civil engineering na course. So, if you have any questions, you can message us or you can comment it sa um, Google Classroom po natin. And that concludes our presentation. Thank you so much for listening and God bless us all.